Hi, this is David of Bioctor. Welcome to video 9C, which is the third and final video devoted to the topic of current issues in the part 2 FRM. And that means we finish with two of the current issues assigned readings, and they are largely qualitative. So this is a short video. The first is Measuring and Managing Risk in Innovative Financial Instruments by Turnbull. And we're asked to describe the bottom-up and top-down pricing approaches and their respective issues. And so the authors set up two approaches to pricing collateralized debt obligations, bottom up or top down. They say in the bottom up approach, this models the event of default and loss given default for individual assets in the collateral pool and then aggregates it. And when the, one of the issues here is the data requirements. That is a bottom up approach is a good starting point. But modeling the behaviors of individual assets depends on the nature of the assets. For some assets, the data requirement may make this approach unfeasible, while in other cases, the underlying assets may be too complex. Another issue is that in order to model the cash flows generated by the collateral pool, it is necessary to model the default dependence between the assets. How is the event of default by one asset, how will that affect the remaining assets? And so this modeling of the default dependence becomes a critical variable and it's notoriously difficult to parameterize. As opposed to a top-down approach, which directly models the cash flows from the assets in the collateral pool instead of working with individual assets in the pool. This reduces the data intensiveness of the calculations. So in this top-down approach, the model assumes a number of different events that could cause a loss. When an event occurs, the portfolio suffers a loss, and the amount of loss depends on the type of event. The occurrence of these different types of events is oftentimes described by or characterized by a Poisson process. So this top-down approach reduces the number of parameters required to estimate the cash flows and makes it easier to calibrate. However, the main disadvantage, as you might expect, is that this approach, this model may poorly describe the actual dynamics of the prices of different structures. So the, defined, the design characteristics of an instrument affect its risk characteristics and its attractiveness to users. The design of the instruments should be such that it appeals to the end user. It should also be able to balance the supply side, for example, reducing the cost of hedging. Certain features can make the instrument sensitive to underlying factors and market disruptions. So in regard to the design characteristics of the instruments, the first major topic is factor sensitivity. The design of the subprime CDO make the tranches very sensitive to the housing market. The subprime CDOs had subprime mortgage backed securities as an underlying, as underlying securities. These bonds were themselves tranches on a pool of individual subprime mortgages. And the typical CDO had pools of mortgage-backed bonds rated double B to double A or average triple B. The problem was that the subordination for triple B MBAs was very small and the triple B tranches were themselves very thin. And so assuming a recovery rate of 50%, for example, and a default rate of 20%, a realistic number, then it was expected that the triple B tranches would be hit. And so here you can see that the subprime mortgage-backed securities themselves become collateral for the subprime CDO. So the authors suggest or say that given the downturn in the housing market and a recessionary and economic environment, if one of the triple B tranche, one of the double B tranches is hit, then it's likely that their triple B tranches will be hit, be hit during the same period, especially given the thin width of the tranches. Either the cumulative default rate of subprime mortgages remains below the threshold, 